Hi, welcome to the 2022.3 release of Intel Graphics Performance Analyzers. I am Pamela Harrison with the Technical Consulting Engineering Team here at Intel. In this video, I will cover the updates and enhancements we introduce in this release. The 2022.3 release focuses on improvements to Intel GPA framework. In our last release video, for the 22.2 release, I showed how you could use GPA Metrics Collector to collect metrics of your choice. In this release, 22.3, we have significantly increased the calculation speed of these metrics for complex workloads. We have also added options for versatility of this feature. Additionally, we have significantly compressed substream data collection, enabled multi-threaded playback for better saturation of work submitted to the GPU, and we have added support for games with complex render passes that use execute indirect with DirectX ray tracing. Starting with GPA Metrics Collector, in the 22.3 release, we improved our metrics collection performance significantly. The results will be calculated and displayed much faster for both Vulkan and Direct3D12 applications. You are likely to see a larger performance improvement with streams from workloads with a larger number of GPU commands. These would be applications with complex rendering. To demo the improvement, I wrote a simple timing script. I store the start time, run GPA Metrics Collector on frame two of a five frame stream capture, store the end time, then print the total time. I run that script first with the GPA Framework 2022.2 release. You see that it took 353 seconds on my 10th generation laptop with UHD graphics. I then run that same script with our new 2022.3 release. Here you see that the same data is calculated and aggregated but only takes 16 seconds on my same laptop. You may also notice that we no longer display the list of callable ranges as they do not add meaning to your profiling. This speed up is an enormous improvement that will make your profiling much faster. In addition to the significant performance improvement to GPA Metrics Collector, we have introduced more options to help you control the data that is calculated. In the 22.2 release, you could output the GPU metric values per frame only. In this release, 22.3, as well as per frame values, you can display metrics based on GPU event boundaries or render pass boundaries. Additionally, you have the option to calculate metrics from multiple consecutive frames. Let's take a look. Using help, you can see the additional options. Minus E for per event collection, minus P for per pass collection, and minus N for collecting data for a certain number of frames. Let's first look at the per event option. You can retrieve data for the list of single GPU events such as draw, clear, dispatch. This will take some time to execute as it is calculating data for each GPU event. When it finishes, you will see the number of the API call and the data value associated with each of those calls. If you want to see the API command name along with other data, enable the debug logging option with minus V debug, which I will show momentarily. First, for the per pass option, Here you see a single data value for the set of events in each pass. Let's now take a look at those API call names that you will see when using de debug logging with the per pass option. Note that it is common to see multiple commands prior to the GPU event command. Those initial commands are for associated setup work. You should also note that when querying per event or per pass, you want to see the individual values, so don't use the minus R aggregation option. For the values per frame, however, 
we usually do want to aggregate. So let's look at metrics aggregated per frame for three frames. Here I specify that I want to gather data for three frames starting at frame two and using minus R for aggregation. Because I requested EU stall and EU thread occupancy for three frames, three values are returned for each of the two metrics, one per frame, therefore six total values. These additional options allow you to view precisely the data you need to analyze without a lot of extra data. Next, I will demo subcapture. We achieved a huge improvement decreasing the subcapture file size between our 22.2 release and our current release. But what exactly is subcapture? You may know a stream is a set of frames. A few releases ago, we introduced the ability to extract a portion of a stream to create a smaller stream. Even if your original stream is only a minute or so of gameplay, that stream may occupy more than a gigabyte of space. These large stream files contain so much data that besides taking a lot of storage space, every time you play the stream back or run a query, change a selection, it takes a lot of time to process the data. Since we added the subcapture feature, you have had the ability to extract one or more frames from a stream, resulting in a subcapture or a smaller stream and hence a smaller file size. For the 22.3 release, we introduced subcapture compression so that subcapture files are much, much smaller than before. Compression is a beta feature, so it is disabled by default. To enable it, use the enable compression option. I've already captured a stream of just over 1000 frames. Here you see we create a subcapture of 500 frames from the larger stream starting at frame number 100. I enable compression so that my resulting stream is small. So that is how to use the subcapture command with compression. But regarding our improvement with this release, how much did we actually achieve? Well, here is an example. We tested substream capture compression on one of our favorite AAA games with a subcapture of 1200 frames. On the left is the subcapture stream without using the compression option. It requires 1.66 gigabytes of space. On the right is the subcapture stream of those same 1200 frames using the subcapture feature with compression. Now it only occupies 1.04 gigabytes. These subcaptures allow you to retain the data you need for regression comparisons over time in much less space than if you stored the full larger streams. This concludes the highlights for release 2022.3. Try out these features and more with our free download of Intel GPA framework. Thank you for watching. For more information about the Intel GPA framework 2022.3 release, and to download it for free, see the links. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the Intel Software YouTube channel for more Intel GPA news and updates.